and welcome everyone Lisa here thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel so today I'm going to be sharing two birthday cards for boys and I'm going to be using this adorable stamp set by Raisin Boat and it's called Robo Party you can find this stamp set at somemorefun.com and they actually have red rubber stamps and clear stamps so be sure to check that out now I'm going to start us off with I'm using a stamp positioning tool um, you don't have to have one, but I just think it makes it a little bit easier. I'm also using some 80 pound Nina Solar White cover stock, stock paper. And I am going to stamp three of the images from the stamp set using Memento Ink and Tuxedo Black. And I'm going to be doing some coloring with some Copic markers. And I'm going to speed up through that process, but I'm going to read to you the colors that I used as we speed through that. So the Copic colors that I'm using are C9, C7, C5, C3, C1, YG13, YG17, B39, and B37 just to add a little color to the images. Once I finish coloring these, I'm going to run them through my scan and cut to cut them out. Now if you don't have a scan and cut, you can fussy cut these no problem. There's not a lot of intricate details to these images so they would be pretty easy just to fussy cut. So here are the three images that I cut out with the scanning cut and the next step is I'm going to take a rectangle die and I'm going to cut two pieces of 80 pound Nina solar white paper and then I'm going to run them through my big kick in an embossing folder and go ahead and emboss those. Okay, so we have our two pieces of four and a quarter by five and a half inch embossed paper. And if you don't have rectangle dies that size, then you can just use your paper trimmer to cut the paper and then emboss it. And now we're going to take that paper and we're going to cut it into strips. Now, I like to cut mine into uh, different sizes. Maybe you want yours all the same. Sometimes I do that too. It's completely up to you. There's no wrong or right way to do this part. Okay, so I've picked out a few pattern papers and I've cut some into strips. And I made sure to keep the width of the pattern paper the same as my card base. So my card base is four and a quarter inches wide so I made sure that my pattern paper was four and a quarter inches wide. Now the height of the pattern paper doesn't matter so much because you're going to be creating kind of like windows um, with this white embossed paper that we did. So as you see there, I'm going to take these white embossed pieces, I'm adding 3D mounting foam to the back of them and then I'm going to just barely cover up that pattern paper because I want it to be where you can see it. So I'm going to continue this process of adding 3D mounting foam to the embossed paper and adding my pattern paper to my card base and building our card base like that. Okay, so we're just going to add some 3D mounting foam to the back of our image and we're going to put that on the front of our card. Now I did do a sentiment, um, heat embossed a sentiment for the front, but I decided I didn't want to go with that. I'm going to use it on the next card. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and stamp the sentiment on the inside of the card. And I'm going, it's, it's a small sentiment, so I'm going to stamp it in the bottom right hand corner. And that leaves me plenty of room to write any message that I might want to write in the card. Now for the next card, we're just going to keep that same process that we did with the first one. Only difference is we're only using one pattern paper and we're going to have a lot more of it showing than we did on the other pattern papers. So we're going to do the same thing here with our images, add 3D mounting foam and this time we're going to take that embossed sentiment and we're going to add it to the back of this image before we adhere it to our card base. We're also going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back of it to help hold it down also. So once we have that done and we arrange our images the way that we want them, we're pretty much done other than adding a few final touches to our cards. Okay, so we're just going to finish off with a few enamel dots and there we have our two birthday cards 
using the Raisin Boat Robo Party stamp set and a fun way to use pattern paper. Okay, so six by six paper pads have always been a struggle for me to store. Um, I do keep them in the clear um, bins like everybody else does, but keeping the paper pads and the scraps nice and neat and together has always been a struggle. I came up with a solution one day. I grabbed one of my Avriel Extra Large Stamp and Die Pockets and I cut the top of it off. Now before everybody gets on here commenting how nuts that is, I did it only with one and I made sure that this is something that I thought would really work for me. And it has. I have not regretted it one bit. So after waiting a full month, and testing out that one stamp pocket, I went ahead and committed to all of my paper pads being stored like this. So it's so much easier. Um, they're in the plastic. Everything is together. I don't have to worry about stuff falling out, scraps going here, going there. It's just all together. Also, as you see, you can store your enamel dots with it. Now, for me, that's a big bonus because I always buy coordinating enamel dots um, and I just slide them right down in the front with the paper pad. And for me, it makes more sense because I'm not going to two separate places trying to find things. Like, I had my enamel dots in a drawer and the paper pads in a bin in separate areas. And I oftentimes would forget that I had matching enamel dots. I also have found just recently that the little die cut pieces like the odds and ends that Doodlebug has, they store great with your paper pads and the stamp and die pockets also. Just keep it in its original packaging and it slides right down in the back between your scraps and your paper pad perfectly. So I wanted to share this with you guys. I'm so in love with it. Remember, if you're going to try it, try one pocket first for about a month and make sure it's for you and then dive into it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep crafting.